Hey, a pleasant, happy day, everybody. This is Sports Tonight News. I'm Joe Boric, and we're here on an odd Tuesday uh, for your Philadelphia Eagles preview. As, of course, the game due to um, Washington football team's COVID concerns got pushed back, which then allowed Landon Dickerson and some others for the Eagles to have concerns. Um, but we'll get, into, we'll get into it um, today, and we'll go over a hard game to preview just due to the fact of the people that are out and the fact of we don't even know who our quarterback is, let alone who the Washington football team's quarterback is for sure, um, going in at this very moment. But first and foremost, Andrew, how are you doing today? Doing pretty good. Just got home a little bit ago, a few days ago, and now I get to enjoy it here and watch a game. Yeah. Yeah, you're back home. You're back in the uh, basement, having the middle basement pillar the, <laughs> that, that's always there in those basements uh, behind you. Yeah. Um, but, no, I, I think yeah. the biggest thing for this game is I'll read some quotes from the coaches, which is the right thing to say. Nick said they tell us where to play and when to play, and we'll play there. Obviously, that's the right thing to say. You're not going to bitch and moan as a coach. Because no. that's going to rub off on your players. I'm sure, he's, if, feeling if, if, I'm sure if, he's feeling other stuff inside. <laughs> no, in, oh, oh, inside, I'm sure he's not saying that to his family. Like, I'm sure at home he's probably said something. But, like, uh, yeah, in the stadium, like, it makes sense. Plus, it would be odd for Sirianni, who's a more upbeat, positive, like, has that personality, to all of a sudden be like, screw the NFL. The NFL is a disgrace. What the hell is it? Like, that would be so off bar that you would be like, what is what just happened? Like, like I would be right. so thrown off if that happened. But um, <clears throat> the the big thing with this team, which is why on Rivera said a quote, but the Eagles are six and seven, Washington six and seven, and we're both battling for the wild card. So that's why that should have been the biggest talk coming into this week. But now it's unfortunately because of the pandemic. It's all the people that are out having to push the game back. But Juan Rivera in uh, Converse said is his quote, well, you take every able body you have. They're all getting opportunities to practice. They're getting opportunities in meetings and walkthroughs to make sure they're being brought up to speed on what we're doing and how we're doing it. Um, so I, I think um, – Obviously, both coaches are taking the right mindset in this scenario. You can't, if you're on either side, um, have any negative thoughts about it because that just rubs off. We talked about top-down effect before with different podcasts or on different teams. That rubs off on your team if the leader's showing signs of being frustrated at what happened. So I think both coaches are taking the right steps. Now it's just on, obviously, the leaders, and I do think both leaders of each team. The problem with Washington football team is most of their leaders of their team are out where the Eagles at least still have guys like Jason Kelsey and a couple guys in the locker room that can kind of rally the troops uh, to be the leaders in the locker room as well on top of the coaches. Absolutely. I, I think, again, it's a tough one. We don't really know who's playing yet, who's not. depends on how the COVID tests go today. But it's going to be a lot of different um, opportunities. I know they're missing some defensive linemen, so if you win the game on the ground that way, take advantage of the run game early on. And like you said, we don't even know who's playing quarterback yet for the Eagles because of injuries. Yeah, they're so. missing Jonathan Allen, who's the best D-tack. So, like, if you don't have to run through Jonathan Allen, that should help your running game, which, by the way, is one of the best running games ever since Nick Sirianni decided running the football was a good idea. Um, I think the, Chase Young's out, too. Yeah, oh, he is. Yeah, you're right. I think he might be out, too. Yeah, so if you have Allen and Young out, those are two of the most dynamic guys at stopping the run and young at stopping whatever the hell you want Chase Young to stop. Um where well, the problem is we have we're missing Landon Landon Dickerson, so he's been a huge part on that left side. So we'll see who they have replaced him because Andre Diller's out too. So your replacement form is also gone. So that's my down problem. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I talked about in the show that Steel and I do weekly for Steel Flyers. Um that comes out at noon on Steel Flyers. Like I said the problem with the Eagles right now, this game's so hard to predict because both teams have certain positions that are three or four deep. Where the reason I leaned towards the Eagles in that video when we did it is just because they have so much more people out. Even mm -hmm. unless if, like, we have seven guys added today to the people we already have out, Washington has a he managed and, like, potentially Chase Young. They have Allen. They have a Fuller. Like, they have – and then they have both of their first two quarterbacks potentially out. Where at least we have our second guy in line, unless if he, unfortunately, hopefully nothing happens with Gardner. But, like, at least we have that going. So – those kind of things led to me leaning a bit. And also, we rely a lot on the running game. And the stat I was going to give is the Eagles are the first team to rush for at least 175 in six straight games since the 95 Bears did it in seven. Um, or since the 85 Bears, excuse me, did it in seven. So 
obviously they're rushing really well, but something Washington's also big on when they're the most successful is the same thing, is when they're able to rush the football, where I was reading something <clears throat> this week, and they pointed out last week uh, Gibson fumbled early, so then he didn't really get the rock as much, and uh, that that had a negative effect on their overall uh, Washington football team's offense. The second year back, Antonio Gibson, he's a big part of that offense. If you can get him to fumble or you can kind of get him to struggle early, that's kind of the best way, I think, to beat the Washington football team, no matter who's that quarterback. If it's Taylor Heineke, they have the best chance to figure out how to put up points without him doing the best because Heineke he's the best out of all those, out of him, Kyle Allen, and no offense to Sherm, but Taylor Heineke is proven. Um, where, like... I think that's different um, where if you have other guys in, you're going to have to really rely on Gibson. So you have to see what happens here. But I think stopping Gibson from their offensive standpoint is the biggest thing you have to do. Cause I believe McKissick is out with uh, is part of the either protocol or he still has a concussion. So you're not going to have to worry about it's concussion. Um, concussion. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so you're not going to have to worry about JD McKissick. So you just have to worry about Gibson at that point. Yeah. No, I think that's. Per- I think you said it perfect. I mean, even if we don't know what Gibson's status is, but I think he's going to play. Um, but obviously, if they're missing their quarterbacks, you really don't have to worry about the passing game. He'll be fine with Darius Slay on the outside. Their pass rush has been phenomenal lately. So, really, all you got to worry about tonight is stopping Gibson. That's the only thing mm-hmm. on the defensive end you got to worry about. Yeah, the only way you have to worry about more is if, because obviously there's testing a day and. With the new protocols, one of their quarterbacks, like the writer I read this morning, said, could test out at the last testing. Yeah. So, so you can take a limited amount of tests until you go negative. You just exactly. Go negative. So, like, if somebody tests out, then you the, that changes everything. Granted, I think it only really changes everything if it's Taylor, because no offense to Kyle Allen, but we saw when he came in how, like, they need somebody that can run in the backfield a little bit as their quarterback, too, it seems, in order to be successful, that can kind of run the option plays and kind of use his legs if he has to like Heineke can. Because when Kyle Allen came into that last game um, against Dallas, uh, he didn't do good. and he So it's not like he looked lost out there, had a bad uh, turnover himself on a – I think it was a fumble or something like that. But, like – uh, he he just I think Heineke if he tests out that's the only time when I would actually be like okay now we actually kind of have to look towards the quarterback a little bit not that he's great but he can do more than anybody else like Kyle Allen to me is just a stay back in the pocket and throw it back up for the most part exactly. where Heineke yeah. can actually run with you a little bit and you have to worry about a little bit more um, if, if he's in the game but. Well, for me, real okay. quick, real quick, here's an update. Ron Rivera said that um, the team is in Philly already, but Tyler Heineke and Kyle Allen are still in DC awaiting COVID tests. If they get cleared, they'll be up. They'll make it up to Philly. Expect a decision around 4 p.m. If both of them out, Garrett Gilbert is named the starter. Okay, so it will be Gilbert who has um, relations with Rivera and Foster, and also we talked about it before the podcast. It kind of makes some sense because he has more experience in the league being on. Uh, third string practicing with teams. He was with the Patriots learning the most, what people consider, quote unquote, the most complex offense. Uh, So I think obviously he could figure out the Washington football team's offense if that's the case. Plus he has a relationship with both of those coaches. So uh, it it makes sense. It's unfortunate that Kyle won't get a chance to get his first start, but it it makes logistical, it makes logistical sense. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, Sal brother. (laughs) Yeah. But... Um, I think the big thing, too, uh, when we look at this team, you have uh, the Washington football team has <clears> – <throat> I was trying to find the – they also have uh, the one of their centers out, too, for blocking purposes. So actually, three of their – two of their centers. So they have Larson, who I believe is their starting center, and then they have that backup who is uh, – I'm trying to find his name – uh, Chase Rollier has a broken or a lower leg injury, and then Sheriff is on the Brandon Sheriff is on the COVID list. So, like, I feel like uh, if you can be a little bit more aggressive than like the one thing, like Seth Joyner is right on this. The one thing you could get on Jonathan Gannon for this season a little bit is conservativeness, 
where like it's not that our defense has played bad it's uh, it's been getting better of late but you can always be better and you have guys that can blitz the quarterback it's just you're not necessarily taking the advantage of it at least in my opinion at all the times you can where if you're playing a team like this that's going to be missing three potentially four linemen um I would say you have to be a little bit more aggressive in this game as well to try to get to particularly a backup quarterback that can get rattled really quickly like Eric Gilbert. Yeah, no, without question. Um, that's what – yeah, you have to win the game on the line. Like we talked about with the run game, you have to win, and especially on the defensive line where they're missing just as many people on the offensive line. You have to win that. So it's going to all start there, get some sacks from Fletcher Cox and, the, and them and uh, take advantage of it. Yeah, no, exactly. I think I think this year we've been using Cox. Uh, I didn't really think about it until Zach honestly brought it up when we were talking on places, but we've been using him differently with Gannon where it hasn't always put him in the most opportune places to be his best to get to the quarterback and, and uh, do what he has to do. And the same thing's kind of going with Hargrave. You, put, you keep sliding Hargrave and Cox at different parts of the line on plays where it kind of takes them out of their money zone, so to speak, to be able to get to where they're normally used to getting to. And that that's something that I think is just a coaching adjustment that you can make. It was a bye week, so it's something that you might even see this week because it's something you could have implemented over the bye. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how that happens going forward because usually you don't have this late of a bye week. So Exactly. That's something Fletcher alluded to early on in the year. I think it was after like week six or seven he even said that. It was kind of some growing pains in adjusting to the new coach because they're running different schemes out there for him. So. Now you hit that spot on. No, yeah. Yeah, I remember him saying that. He was kind of, that was when we had a couple players that showed frustration early on. Well, I think Gannon's got better, but you can always even be better. And I think the big part of that is sometimes he holds back when he could kind of go for the jugular a little bit more at the opposing offense on certain plays. Well, I think that's something that the whole year, the whole staff's improved on. Sirianni, Gannon, I think everyone's kind of figured out more ins and outs than where we were in week one and two. So, I mean, yeah, it's frustrating at the beginning of the year, but we got to remember, the rookie's just like players. It's going to take time to adjust in this new role for them. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Um, but I feel like the one thing that we have to um, take into account, even though they have some guys like we talked about, uh, Forrest is out, Fours out, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the one guy's a torn ACL, uh, McTire, but like they have guys out on the defense, but this football team's defense has obviously been even holding with a lot with people out losing 27, 20 to Dallas, um, holding the, uh, Buccaneers to 19 points when they beat them. Like they're a team that has had success this year. So you don't want to come in I'm. This is my question to you. You don't want to. You have to still look at this team. Like you hear quotes from players, like we're never going to take a team lightly, no matter who's out. You got to look at them like who they are still. Um. So, like, that that's that's to me why. Um, I think the Eagles have to come into this game thinking this is still the Washington football team that's got here because of their defense and running game and attack them that way still. But you want to be more aggressive up the gut because of the people that are out. You just can't. I've seen this team in the past take teams lightly, and you don't want to take this team for granted because of the people they have out on the defensive side of the ball. Oh, absolutely. It's still an NFL game. I mean, you have to take it. Can't overlook anybody. That goes for any sport. I and mean, we we saw that with the Phillies, the easiest schedule in the game, and we still missed the playoffs. We had a losing record after the All-Star break. We've seen it with the Sixers the other day. The Heat missed their three leading scorers, still found a way to lose. So you still got to go out there and play every day. Flyers and, lost to the damn Canadians. That is true, but I think Canadians had everybody, didn't they? No, they did not. They had a lot of their people out. At, they, 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 they are a team in shambles, and they had a lot. But they're basically the freaking – how the Dolphins have been for the past, like, six seasons, except for this season. Like, that's basically my okay. well, I knew I knew they were the worst team in the East, but I thought they had most of their guys. So. They were – I think it was like – well, Dvorak was out there. There was a bunch of people. Uh, that's why that game pissed me off. Like, I, I thought that was a good – more then I was happy again that we beat Ottawa because they're the better version of – the much better version of uh, the Kraken where they're competitive but have very talented young players with the Kraken or a uh, competitive expansion team that are going to take three years to probably do anything. But... 
Fortunately, yeah, fortunately, the Kraken don't get the same luck the Knights got. <laughs> Everybody learned no. from that mistake. But, no, yeah, that's why, though, you have to go out there, um, still play the game, still take it as an NFL game. You're still going up against NFL players. And, a de- and when you're playing a defensive team, anything can happen. All it takes is one turnover, one special teams play, and, and it could cost you. Mm-hmm. It is going to be interesting this week because I do see um, – I remember earlier in the week uh, they were saying he could be active, but according to this injury report, I don't see Jordan Howard listed anymore. So if you could have, yeah, if you can have him gain well, if you you're probably going to deactivate one of these people. I doubt, maybe you're going to the game with four backs, but you have Scott Sanders, Gainwell, Howard. It it, it allows you to do a little bit more because Sanders is obviously the back that can kind of mix in it all. Howard's the guy that we saw Nick use him just for what Jordan Howard is, which is basically just go right at the, the team and, and uh, get get the yardage. And we've kind of seen him kind of throw it back a little bit where Howard has been on practice squads because he's kind of lost his groove. And then it seemed like before he got injured with Nick Sirianni committing to the run more. I don't know about you, but I felt like he was kind of starting to find his – Groove back a bit as a secondary back, and then you have Miles Sanders, of course, who I still think should obviously be the primary back because I just got done saying he can do it all. Jordan Howard is just a give him the damn ball, and let him run through people type of a running back. Yeah, Jordan Howard's the running back on the two, three yard line. You just give it to let him punch it in. A uh, bigger back than Sanders, he'll get those extra yards. He fights through it. He's straight north to south rather than west, and he's kind of runner. Um, but no, all nine players on the injury report are full participants of practice yesterday and Sunday. So we should be healthy outside our two illnesses in uh, Andre Dillard and Landon Dickerson. Uh, everybody should be good, good, good to go. Yeah, and I think that's why it will be huge um, to be able to get, unless if uh, – um, also, I think uh, he hasn't been the biggest thing, but I'm pretty sure isn't Driscoll still out with an ankle injury? Because you might have been able to slide. We're, we're talking about who would replace. Yeah, I, th- I think he's on the IR. So since he's on the IR, he doesn't count on the injury report. Is the injury list. Saying. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. No, I was just thinking because those guys like no, Shamala right. and still Driscoll that are both on the IR are out where they probably would have been the guys you would have slid in to replace yeah. Dickerson and Dillard. So you also don't even have them. But you have yeah, all these and, other – And uh, I think Brandon Books, I think this is his last week on the IR. Oh, yeah. But, oh, yeah, good point. Yeah, but pectoral, he's still on the IR. But I think with the guys you have back, with the amount of people on defense, especially plus both of their quarterbacks out, I would have to still uh, – even looking today after I did it uh, yesterday with Steel before we knew the updates today, I was still up to lean with Busters this game because it's in the link. You have the home crowd behind you. Uh, you have more guys active, even if Gardner Minshew's going. We saw Gardner Minshew play well against the Jets, and the 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 football team's defense is much better than the Jets. But they have a lot of key people on their defense out. So um, I think that will be a big factor to allow him to have a pretty good game again. And then you'll be able to kind of pound the rock because you have a lot of these key defensive players out. And if you have Jordan Howard back, that's just going to help you even more to pound the rock. Absolutely. And I think I think that bodes well for us because we're just pounding the rock. You're keeping the clock going. You're not letting anything kind of happen, and you're controlling the game through that way, time of possession. And I think you control time of possession with this team, offensively and defensively. You're going to win You're going to win the majority of your games. So I think that's what you're going to have to go out there and do in a game like this. I will say, in terms of Minshew versus Hurts, I think I'd ride with Hurts in the long run. Because you're facing a team with so many injuries, I wouldn't. it wouldn't hurt to try to start Minshew, give – Hurts that extra rest. Yeah, yeah, to see. And then if he's able to go as the backup and Minshew, say, stinks for the first two to three possession, you could yeah. always just revert back at that point, too. So, yeah, th- that's not a that's not a bad point. Um, for me, I feel like with this team, w- when it comes to pounding the run, that's similar to this is going to have a chance of either being a good offensive game back and forth or a very boring game because both of these teams like having time of possession numbers. Like they beat you with having the pounding the rock, having the ball a little bit on offense, and then that's what in turn makes their defense the best the best it can be because they're not tired and depleted like some other teams that rush down the field and then uh, do it that way and then the defense is right back out there. So this game is going to be interesting to see if the defenses give up points. So it's kind of like a back and forth 
like joust or if it's one of those more boring stopping the run games, having a couple slant passes mixed in, where it's a defensive game that's like 13-10. Like, it's going to be interesting to see what ends up happening in this one because both of these teams love their time of possession numbers. But a question I think um, I'll go to you for to round out. Um, is Sorry, you're you... kind of frozen. I don't know if you want to repeat that question, but. Oh, uh, yeah. You're, back, now. you're back. Yeah. yeah. No, a question that I wanted to uh, phrase to you um, about what do you think for the team? We kind of talked about it here, but what do you think of the three keys they can't be going into this game? And like they have to like not be thinking going into this game and the three things they have to address and attack going into this game to have the most success. I'd say win, win the Lions. I mean, I'll keep that as one, but offensively and defensively, that's where you're going to win the game. We just talked about controlling the clock. We talked about that missing offensive lineman, winning the game through the pass rush, attacking Gilbert, Heineke, or um, Allen, whichever one it is. Obviously, Allen and Gilbert are probably a little easier than Heineke as he likes to scramble as it is. But that, that's my first spot is, is win the game with, uh, on the Lions. Um, I'd say – Get in rhythm early. Obviously, it's a weird – you haven't played football in over two weeks. Uh, you had the bye week, and then now you had this extra three days Couple rest. So, days. like, I expect a little bit of a slow start just because of that, but find rhythm early on. Um, I think you hit it on the nose. I think it's going to be one of those boring games. I think it's going to be a boring Eagles kind of do what you have to kind of win. So, I'd say that those are kind of the big things there. And then um, same thing with Hurts. I mean, think about it. He hasn't played in three weeks. So, I'd say find the passing game early on. That's what I want to see. We'll know we'll be able to run the ball. So I'm going to come out with a couple passes, try to get Hurts going on early. Yeah. But no, yeah, I'll, that would I'll be throw nice. my, I'll throw my I'll throw my score in with that, with the keys. Um, but I'm going to take, again, a boring, sloppy win. Eagles 17, Redskins 13. 17-13. Yeah, I think mixing in Hurts in the passing game early uh, would be key. I don't think you want to overpass it, though, in this game. So I will say that because I think the best way to beat this team is running, but you do want to get that confidence up early, but don't throw it like 30 times after you get that confidence up mixed in the running game still, unless if he's passing like he's the second coming of Vic when we got him here, uh, then you might want to just keep letting him run for at, at that point. But um, I, I think the keys in this game is if you have Howard back, you have that three-headed monster, because game will has been good, but I consider the three-headed monster Scott Sanders and Howard and then game has been mixing in and becoming a solid contributor where I feel like he's just by default the odd man out if you only activate three backs um where uh, I think if you have all those guys in that's going to help you go a long way personally I would just activate Kenneth game and run more screen passes and tell Jalen Reger to get wherever the hell is not a football field but but, but that that that's my own um that's my own opinion uh, where at least J.J. or Sega Whiteside plays on the special teams. Jalen Reger can't even do that. He fumbles a catch that he's supposed to make yeah. uh, and, and lets it go over his head. So, like, like, like um, I mean, I think this game is about the running game, like you said, have key passes early, like take advantage of getting him going early, but I don't want to overpass it. And then we have the healthier defense. So our defense for me, the third key for me is our defense – is going to have to play like they have an unhealthy offense, like the or not the the Washington football team does, and also have an unhealthy defense. So they should actually they're, they're the better defense when all things are together. But the Eagles tonight should have the better defense if less if all those guys test out a protocol last minute the, that are that are out for Washington, then that would change that. But as long as like college totally and all the key players that are out, that they should have the better defense tonight too, especially if Garrett Gilbert is playing who is basically a little bit quicker version of um what's that quarterback for the uh for the um Steelers the the Mason Rudolph <laughs> Mason Rudolph yeah where, sick, like, right? yeah where like he can throw the ball a bit but he can't move so if you if you if you're, if you're getting pressure on him he ain't going nowhere like there's, there's just nowhere there's nowhere for him to for him to really move to unless he's trucking you out of the way so like you gotta 
you got to be able to get to him, I think, if that's the case. And even if it's Kyle Allen, he's not a hard quarterback to get to. Like you said, the only harder quarterback to get to is Taylor. So, I, I, I mean, and then even Sherm, he was more of a pocket guy if he did get the start. He can move probably exactly. better. Yeah. Not probably. He can move better than Garrett Gilbert. I mean, most people can move better than Garrett Gilbert. Uh, but uh, he's more of a pocket guy. Um but I, I do think this is going to be a win for the Eagles. I, w- I will say it'll probably be sloppy. I'm going to go with an extra field goal. So I'll go 20 to 17. I think it'll be one of those games where I don't know if that field goal will be the end of the game where we have a Raiders-like celebration where we uh, kick it in with a couple seconds to go and, we'll, and we're going nuts. Or if that'll be we have a clutch right. defensive uh, – drive to round out the game that we don't let them get in field goal position to tie the game or a touchdown and then we win that way i'll take either way because either way will be plenty exciting for me as long as it's a win in the end right it's all matters Mm -hmm. and i think with the guys out for them and the guys in for us um even with the issues on the line i just read how many guys were out on washington's line and if they have a guy that's slow like Gilbert back there that's not going to benefit them at all so that's why I think the Eagles should be able to have success in some of games they have the right mindset even though like their players were pissed I think this showed like you said the growth of Siri as a rookie coach because he said the right things has had the right mindset all week the that the right mindset all week that has kind of regrouped the players back into just focusing on the game and not caring about the NFL's decision anymore yeah. but but if you have any uh, closing thoughts of where people could find you, uh, if you want to give out where people could find you, you can give that now. AJ underscore Santangelo. You can find me on Twitter. Look for a lot of a lot of different sports stuff on there um, as we continue here through the season. Love to talk to people on Twitter. So uh, reach out to me through there. Yeah, you can find me at JJ Blur 26 on Twitter and uh, writing articles on uh, Flyers Nitty Gritty and also SteelFlyers.com, as well as at this YouTube channel, of course, Sports Fanatic News. We really appreciate you all love and support. Continue to subscribe down below. And as always, have a great holiday season. You can probably see that little twinkling tree in the background a little bit here. (laughs) So have a good holiday season, everybody. Stay safe and go Eagles. Let's get that win tonight.